Next on Worcester News Tonight, Westboro voters head to the polls to determine whether or not they can keep marijuana companies out of town. Plus, nurses rally to keep psych psychiatric resources available at UMass Memorial Medical Center. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Andy Madison. We begin tonight in Westboro, where the town has passed a measure to opt out of allowing marijuana businesses to come to town, a move which could pave the way for other towns to do the same. Voters cast their ballot today in Westboro at the high school. Last year, recreational marijuana use became legal in Massachusetts, but with several restrictions. Recently, town officials have looked at the way the state law is written and found an option to allow towns to put it to a vote. Supporters of the opt-out option said this is the first of three votes that need to take place to allow the town to prohibit marijuana companies from coming to Worcester or to Westboro. Around dealing um, a still federally illegal drug was stripped from them under this law. This is a way for cities and towns to take some local control back, especially in a town like ours that voted no to commercial marijuana sales in the first place. Again, tonight's vote took place in Westboro, and the unofficial results from the town clerk show the measure to opt out passed. Now, this is just the first step for the town in a series of votes on keeping marijuana companies from the town. More on this story as it develops. Tonight in Worcester, dozens of nurses and mental health advocates are rallying to avoid a shortage of psych psychiatric beds and other services for the mentally Ill, Ill in the city. The group met outside City Hall before tonight's City Council meeting in an effort to gain support from city officials. UMass Memorial Medical Center is proposing to close 13 psychiatric beds at its university campus. Under the proposal, the beds would instead be used as medical surgical beds. One nurse we spoke with at the rally says it's important to keep these beds because there's already a shortage of resources across the state to help the mentally ill going to take a huge percentage of the available beds presently away from mentally ill patients um, and it's also really important because the unit that I work on is uh, housed within the main hospital so we can take care of people with uh, medical and psychiatric issues where uh, a lot of places can't do that. The UMass Memorial Medical Center released a statement in response to the rally saying, quote, the UMass Memorial Medical Center leadership team has spent nearly two years of thoughtful planning, research and analysis and is convinced that this plan is not only the best course of action, but is also the right thing to do. These changes address critical hospital capacity issues and are in the best interest of our behavioral health and medical surgical patients. An order was also proposed at tonight's city council meeting asking the city manager to look at the impact closing the beds would have at UMass Memorial Medical Center. The Worcester Fire Department is investigating a fire on Stafford Street, which damaged a few businesses earlier today. Firefighters were able to keep it from spreading into this pizza shop. No one was injured in the fire and there is some damage to the pizza shop in an adjacent building. The fire chief is looking into where the fire started and if the building had smoke detectors. I really don't know yet. Um, we're looking into that now. If there was anything, the ceiling was totally burnt away, so it's under investigation. The fire caused heavy smoke on Stafford Street. Police closed off part of the road for a few hours to let crews investigate the fire. State and local police searching for a Paxton teenager who was reported missing on Monday. Friends and family are concerned about the whereabouts of 16 year old Eva Douglas and police believe they know where she is or excuse me where who she is with. Our Brittany Schaefer has the latest on the investigation. This came out of nowhere. This is so strange. 16 year old Eva Douglas of Paxton has been missing since Monday afternoon. Paxton police are now looking for her and her 18 year old boyfriend who they believe she's with. The boyfriend is of legal age. He's 18 years old, but he did leave a note saying he was going to leave. Uh, they have been known in the past to be together. Police say tracking the teens is a challenge. Douglas and her boyfriend both left their cell phones at home, haven't used any credit cards, and police say it doesn't appear they took a car. We were in local contact with area police departments along with state police, local and federal agencies. We've interviewed friends, we've uh, talked to the parents again, we have used social media. Douglas is a sophomore at Wachusett Regional High School and her boyfriend is a senior. Students at the school say their disappearance was on everyone's mind Tuesday. Oh everybody, yeah, oh yeah, everybody, everybody. everybody. like it. rumors like crazy. Seniors Adam Mamoni and Joe Baldarelli know both Douglas and her boyfriend and say they are good people. She 
normal person. She's a very nice girl. Um, Tyler's a nice kid too. They're smart kids. It's just, I don't know what's going on. It's strange. I was shocked, especially they're saying Tooker and everything. I don't think Tyler would ever do anything like that. You know, they're both good kids. Mamoni and Baldarelli say students are hoping for their safe return. He wouldn't kidnap ever. That would never be a thing that would happen. It would just, she would go with him and it would be planned out and hopefully they're just smart and they come back. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. One Worcester community gathering today to mark a tragic anniversary of a deadly fire on Florence Street. Family of four was killed back in 1990 in an apartment fire. Every year, the Maine South Alliance for Public Safety meets at the Fire Memorial on Main Street to honor the four people who died that day. The memorial also has the names of people killed in all fire-related deaths over the last 30 years in Worcester. Fortunately, no one was killed from a fire in the city in 2016, so no new, no new names were added to the memorial. Hundreds gathering in Worcester tonight in advance of tomorrow's Women's Day celebrations. The YWCA of Central Massachusetts hosted an event tonight aimed at celebrating the social, economic, cultural, and political success of women. Tuesday's event also called for greater equality for women and featured Massachusetts Attorney General Maura Healey as the keynote speaker. We spoke with the YWCA who says International Women's Day is important for the country. The theme for this year is Be Bold, and which is very important because in the climate that we find ourselves in as women um, in our country right now, we have to be bold, we have to take action for what is fair and for what is just. Many events are planned tomorrow to celebrate Women's Day, including a day without women where female workers could take the day off work to show what it is like without women in the workplace. After waiting for almost a year, a four year old boy now has a new heart. We introduced you to Ari Schultz in November when he was drafted to the Assumption College baseball team. Ari has congestive heart failure and has already been through three open heart surgeries. There he is with the baseball team there who is practicing in Florida this week. They've been keeping tabs on Schultz. Greyhounds coach, head coach Mike Rocco says they got a text from Ari's parents right before their first game. Aaron and Cohen nuts right before our first game. We happened to win our first game and then right after that game, the guys FaceTime with Ari before he went in for surgery. And he was asking the guys how they did. He was asking, he was more concerned about the baseball game than anything else. It was so cool. Ari received his new heart this past Friday. So far he's doing well and has a long road of long recovery ahead of him. The blood drive will be held this Saturday for Ari at the Stowe Fire Department from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. The ex-wife of Wor Worcester Polytechnic Institute's biggest donor is now suing the school. According to the Telegram, the former wife of Robert Foisey claims her ex-husband hid millions of dollars during their divorce and later donated the money to WPI. Janet Foisey is seeking more than $4.5 million. In a statement to Worcester News Tonight, WPI PI says in part, hundreds of students have benefited from their philanthropy over the years. We have no knowledge of any improper conduct alleged in the lawsuit. Boise donated $40 million to the university in 2014. WPI is currently building the Boise Innovation Studio and Messenger Residence Hall. Today, the president of Becker College was named chancellor of UMass Dartmouth, and their selection is coming from a school in Worcester. President of Becker College was named the school's next chancellor. Our Rosalind Flaherty caught up with President Robert Johnson for his reaction to his new job. Becker College President Robert Johnson has been named chancellor of UMass Dartmouth by the UMass Board of Trustees Tuesday. I'm humbled uh, that they selected me and I'm honored. Johnson has been the president of Becker College since 2010. He says in a phone interview, the college has significantly increased enrollment and achieved national ranking by the Princeton Review for five consecutive years. Becker also became home to Mass Digi, which connects the state digital game industry, government, and academia. It's been a team effort, so I really, really appreciate the work that everyone has done. Johnson has also served on the board at the Worcester Regional Chamber of Commerce. Chamber President Tim Murray says it's a logical next step in his career. For Becker College and for Central Massachusetts, uh, you know, it's bittersweet. But I think for the Commonwealth and certainly for UMass Dartmouth, uh, it's a, 
a huge uh, win. UMass President Marty Meehan released a statement on Johnson saying he has developed innovative strategies that have revitalized institutions and transformed lives and I am confident he will help UMass Dartmouth reach new levels of excellence. Johnson will be the first African American to lead UMass Dartmouth. As they are passing the baton to me um, um, on my watch, um, I hope that we will continue, I know that we will uh, continue its legacy, evolve it, and uh, help take it to that next level. Rosalind Flaherty.